through a special series on malnutrition on the NDTV Detol Banega Swast India campaign. Every third child in our country is undernourished. 35% of children under the age of 5 are stunted. 17% of children are wasted and 33% are underweight. Another figure we should be ashamed of is that every second child in our country is anemic. Figures we as a nation should be ashamed of. In today's episode, let's try and understand what malnutrition is, the different types of malnutrition and why is there an urgent need to address it. Malnutrition was responsible for two-thirds of child deaths in India in 2017, killing 7,6,000 children under five. India has one-third of world's stunted children. Stunting or low height for age is caused by long-term insufficient nutrient intake and frequent infections. India has highest level of child wasting in South Asia. Wasting or low weight for height is a strong predictor of mortality among children under five. India has more than a million overweight children. Our country also figures among the set of countries that has more than a million overweight children. 6.4% of children under the age of 2 years get minimum acceptable diet in India. Acute malnourishment afflicts 11% of children between 6 and 59 months. The Comprehensive National Nutrition Survey identifies a high level of micronutrient deficiency among India's youth. See, malnutrition has uh, many dimensions. Uh, the commonest is where people eat less than what is required to remain healthy, that's what we call undernutrition. And the other extreme is where you need more than what you need, that is overnutrition leading to overweight obesity. And what straddles both this form of malnutrition is deficiencies of vitamins and minerals, what we call as micronutrient deficiencies. And so there are multiple dimensions to malnutrition. Nutrition is a key to unlocking the true potential of every child. Well-nourished children, they can ward off diseases easily, they stay in school longer, they grow to be healthier and more productive citizens. Malnutrition is an outcome of several factors. Lack of access to food, micronutrient deficiencies, water and sanitation, infections, behavioral aspects and environmental factors. Malnutrition in children is a major health problem in our country. It can lead to irreversible damage to the brain development, physical growth of the child, diminished capacity to learn, poor performance in school, as well as susceptibility to infections and diseases. Nutrition has a lot of implications on growth, GDP and productivity, and also IQ. Um, India's IQ is also abysmally low in comparison to other countries because of the malnutrition and the demographic it has a lot of implication on demographic dividend um, around 810 million people are also in productive workforce and if you analyze their history and pattern uh, around 50 percent of them in their childhood would have been uh, malnourished uh, so uh, one percent anemia can in decrease productivity by uh, one one percent then uh, one percent stunting also can also decrease productivity by 1.5 percent and uh, it is also estimated that uh, malnutrition has a lot of bearing on gdp five to seven percent of the gdp is also affected by malnutrition uh, there is also another story about the return on investment on nutrition so you invest one rupee and you get 16 rupees as a return on investment so you can Imagine how it has implications on growth, GDP, human capital potential and also demographic dividend. Malnutrition in all its forms includes undernutrition, which is wasting, stunting, underweight, inadequate vitamins or minerals, anemia, overweight, obesity and resulting diet-related non-communicable diseases. The first thousand day window period is considered the most important period to intervene to prevent the lifelong damage caused by malnutrition. Almost all stunting takes place in the first thousand days after conception. The first thousand days of a child are really important. From the time that the child is conceived and is in the mother's womb 
till the first two years of life after birth. And this is because most of the physical, mental, cognitive development occurs in that first thousand days of life. If you look at a two-year-old child, the height of a two-year-old child is already half that of an adult. So in the first two years, the child is growing to half its adult, adult height. Similarly, most of the brain development occurs in the first two years of life and after that there's really very little scope for further growth uh, of the brain. The period of pregnancy and the first two years after life are so important both in terms of having the right nutrition for the growing baby but also in terms of the cognitive and intellectual and social stimulation that the child gets from the environment in which he or she is growing up uh, in order to foster uh, optimal brain growth. In fact, evidence shows that appropriate complementary feeding practices reduces the incidence of stunting, whereas severe infectious diseases in childhood like measles, diarrhea, pneumonia, meningitis and malaria provoke wasting and possibly stunting. Stunting is the chronic insult leading to non-growth, non-linear growth of the child. At birth about 15 to 18 percent children are stunted. They should have been this height but they are this much. At six months roughly it is the same proportion, maybe a little more. Between six months to 18 months of life this doubles. This 18 percent becomes 36 percent or 19 percent becomes 20 percent. So after six months there is a steep rise in the stunting prevalence by age and why this happens is because after six months of age two things are very dangerous in terms of the child's risk one child is now mobile and puts things into his or her mouth he's reaching out to other people so diarrheal disease pneumonia and if you're unvaccinated measles these diseases now affect the child number two after six months of age breastfeeding which is the food in the first six months of life is not sufficient. So semi-solid food has to, to be made available and this food has to have the right components so that it has protein, it has carbohydrate, it has fat. So that food has to contain the right food groups. So the point I'm making is that six months we face a very serious problem that the, the uh, incidence uh, of undernutrition escalates because of two factors coming in, suboptimal food and infections. Hygiene too plays a key role. Environmental enteropathic disorder identified by reduced intestinal absorptive capacity, altered barrier integrity in the intestine and mucosal inflammation is found in young children living in unhygienic conditions. Childhood diarrhea, a major health burden in India. The World Health Organization estimates that 50% of malnutrition is associated with repeated diarrhea or intestinal worm infections as a result of unsafe water, inadequate sanitation or insufficient hygiene. The link between water and sanitation and causes of ill health including diarrheal disease and diarrheal deaths in children is really strong and this has been seen time and again that when you provide clean drinking water and safe sanitation then the disease burden due to diarrhea drops in those communities so i think certainly we are already beginning to see and we should be able to see much stronger links between those districts and states which have become open defecation fee free and the diarrheal disease and health outcomes in children so i think the swachh bharat program and the the jal abhiyan program are great because they really focus on the very essential elements of safe drinking water and sanitation and how fundamental these are to health, particularly the health of, of young children. After early infancy, which is the first thousand days of life, also the first window of opportunity, next comes prioritizing interventions for enhancing nutrition for adolescent girls the mothers of tomorrow as they represent the second window of opportunity for making nutrition for all a reality. Addressing malnutrition before women become pregnant is the only effective exit to malnutrition within the life cycle.
third of women of reproductive age in India are undernourished and an undernourished mother inevitably gives birth to an undernourished baby perpetuating an intergenerational cycle of undernutrition Shahina from Kamali village in Bahraich Uttar Pradesh delivered six babies in a span of 12 years but given that Shahina herself was weak and anemic her lack of nutrition not just complicated her pregnancy but also proved to be fatal for one of her children while the rest were all born malnourished growth retarded adult women are likely to carry on the vicious cycle of malnutrition by giving birth to low birth weight babies so by the time she had her twins they were severely malnourished wahan pehle beta bha uke baad mein khatam hui ka uke baad mein ek beta phir bha tab phir serious hui gayi uke baad mein yahan tum khun utra aadmi ke mere uke baad mein ye dui jodwa ladki bhai uke baad mein ye dui jodwa ladke phir bhai bachcha jodwa paida hua to bahut serious hum के बाद में जब दवा पानी इलाज हुआ खान पीन तो उसके बाद में कुछ दे ही पा तंदुरुस्ती यही मैंने कुछ तो आपको क्या आंगनवाड़ी दीदी आशा दीदी आप हाँ, क्या क्या बताते हैं वो खाने पीने में यहाँ जो दरिया देती हैं उसके हलवा बनाई थे उसके लपटा है उसके बना के दी थे और खाने में यहाँ दाल चावल है सब्जी है तीन टाइम खाना बच्चे का खिलाई थे हम खाई थे Anemia in mothers linked with malnutrition in children. As per the United Nations report, 51.4% of women in reproductive ages are anemic and maternal anemia has a significant effect on the nutritional status of young children, leading to stunting and underweight. As per estimates, anemia is the underlying cause for 20 to 40% of maternal deaths in the country. India alone contributes to about 80% of the maternal deaths due to anemia in South Asia. India has the highest number of anemic individuals globally. Nearly 53% adult women and 50% pregnant women in India are anemic. Undernutrition is a major cause of anemia in children and has the most detrimental effect during the development stages of a child. While child malnutrition is the single biggest contributor to under 5 mortality due to greater susceptibility to infections and slow recovery from illness, it is maternal malnutrition that increases the risk of poor pregnancy. Early marriage, limited life skills, little or no education, low economic and social self-reliance, lack of nutrition, hygiene, family planning, related counseling and more triggers a cascading effect. The outcome is poorly planned families malnutrition and heightened challenges with larger groups of vulnerable women and children in fact as many as 26.8% of indian women marry before turning 18 years of age tum kitne saal ke ho main 18 jab hi peda hua tha kitne kilo ka tha tab hi 1.5 kilo ka tha ha to kamzor hua underweight bachcha hua there are four forms of exclusion i want to bring to the audience the one is social exclusion because of the caste and and some of the people who are mar- from marginalized community so they are excluded because of the geographical exclusion somebody is in a distant hamlet distant pocket <coughs> or hard to reach area or uh, left wing infested area so that certain services don't reach so that is because of the socio- geographical exclusion the third is economic exclusion some people migrate some people go for work they don't get adequate nutritious food um, and services and because of the policy level exclusion and there are many cases we have seen when the uh, pregnant woman in the past pregnancy goes to her mother's house her name must not have been registered in the anganwadi center so she is deprived of that in fact uh, gender bias is also important uh, co determinant i can say uh, if you go to the national family health survey data you can also see child marriage is also there um, there are issues related to inter and intra household disparities and discrimination that has implications on consumption of uh, nutritious food during pregnancy and uh, it has implications of of malnutrition across the life cycle while malnutrition and undernutrition are all problems of our country another key cause of malnutrition is micronutrient deficiency also called hidden hunger deficiency of essential vitamins and minerals such as iron iodine vitamin a and zinc continue in fact for the first time the government has done a survey on micronutrient deficiency The NFHS board data reveals only 47% or less than half of all women in India consume dark green leafy vegetables daily. 45% women consume pulses or beans daily. 54% of women do not consume fruits even once a week. 
Only a third consume either chicken, meat, fish or eggs daily. Only 9.6% of children aged 6 to 23 months receive an adequate diet. Micronutrients are of public health importance in childhood and adolescence generally include iron, vitamin A, iodine and zinc. More recently, folate, vitamin B12 and vitamin D have received greater attention. Micronutrient deficiencies not only affect the health but are also projected to cost around 0.8 to 2.5% of the cross domestic product. The micronutrient is a term that, is, uh, that refers to normal vitamins and minerals like vitamin A, D, iron, iodine. Many of these have to come from the diet that we eat. They are not produced in the body. And as our diet is getting narrower and narrower, people are eating very few things. Uh, many of these things, uh, many of these vitamins and minerals, uh, people are deficient in. Uh, some of them have very grave consequences. Uh, they uh, affect the cognitive development when uh, in children and they affect productivity in adults if they are deficient in iron and they are anemic. So it's a major problem. In India, it is quite widespread. Low productivity, poor cognitive and physical development and increased morbidity and mortality, especially in infants and preschool children, arise from micronutrient deficiencies and contribute to India's disease burden. Even mild to moderate micronutrient deficiencies can lead to impaired cognitive development, poor physical growth. Ayush was born underweight and today at 6 years he is suffering from severe micronutrient deficiency of vitamin D. When Ayush was in my pet, I didn't know about it. So I didn't have any tea, I didn't have any check up, I didn't have anything. One day in my pet, I had a pain in my pet, so I took my mouth and took my mouth. तो अब दाही ने ही मेरे को बताया था कि इसको तो सातवां महीना लग रखा है। तो फिर ये आयुष हुआ था, तो फिर ये वाकई में ही बहुत ज़्यादा कमजोर हुआ था। मैं इसके पास सोती थी, मैंने अपना दूध नहीं पिलाया था, ये पी नहीं पाता था, फिर मेरी छाती चढ़ गई थी, फिर वो अपना आप ही दूध मेरा मरता वहाँ पे इसके जूते बने इसकी टांग की तिरछी जा रही थी टेढ़ी थी तो इसके वहाँ पे जूते बने उसकी टांग भी तिरछी हुई सही सही हुई थी फिर वहाँ से इसका इलाज भी चला हमने वहाँ से इसका दो साल इलाज इसका चला करवाया ये पैर भी चलने लगा बैठ भी नहीं पाता था ये मेरा छत नहीं है मैं इसको यहाँ से काया माया पार्क ले जाती थी धूप के लिए कि डॉक्टर ने बोला था इसकी मालिश के हिसाब मालिश करो तो इसको धूप दिखाना भी बहुत जरूरी है तो मैं इसको काया माया पारक लेके जाती थी धूप के चक्कर में दवाई इसको मिली खाना मैंने इसको टाइम पे दिया हर दो दो घंटे बाद दिया अच्छा ही दिया इसको खाना मैंने हर दो घंटे बाद दलिया भी जो जो मतलब विटामिन की मूंग की दालें मसूर की दालें ये दो साल का था तीन साल का था ऐसा लगता है अब भी आप ये सात साल का मेरा बेटा आई है ये लगता नहीं है सात साल का आई है तो अभी इसके फिर ये बोल भी नहीं पाता था और नहीं चल पाता तो मैंने इसका एडमिशन स्कूल में नहीं करवाया था फिर ये पैर चलने लगा थोड़ा बोलने लगा फिर मैंने इसका अगले साल से एडमिशन करवाया ये The challenges of undernutrition in India is compounded by yet another burden. 20.7% women and 18.6% men in India are reportedly obese or overweight. This double burden of malnutrition therefore has an immense negative bearing on the nutritional status of our country. Overweight in mothers is also associated with overweight and obesity in their offspring. Furthermore, the nutrition transition that has resulted from globalization and economic growth has led to a greater consumption of high energy and nutrient, poor processed foods and more sedentary lifestyles contributes to the rapidly growing overweight and obesity epidemic in India as well as globally. We have continuing challenge of undernutrition, as you know, uh, no 34% children are stunted uh, and a lot of children are uh, anemic, almost half. Uh, but the fact remains that at the same time we are experiencing overnutrition by way of overweight and obesity. The obesity in children is rising, obesity in adults is rising. Uh, obesity between 2005 and 2006 almost doubled. Poor. Uh, physical activity 
and it covers with our own genetic predilection for metabolic syndrome <coughs> and then we are predisposed to diseases like diabetes. Between the age of 10 to 19 years, the CNNS data shows that almost 10% children, 10% children are pre-diabetic and these as adults uh, would be faced with, uh, you know, bad sugar control and maybe a manifest diabetic situation if they don't follow the right lifestyle. It's a very, very dangerous situation. The obesity in children is rising. A major challenge is that mothers, families and communities are often not aware that the young infant is slipping into malnutrition. Growth has started to falter. The problem is often recognized only after the child has become visibly undernourished, becomes listless, does not feed well, becomes more prone to infections and becomes severely undernourished. The need for a nutrition revolution is crucial and it's extremely important to address malnutrition. In the episode next week, we'll bring to you the various interventions across the country, the government policies like the Portion of Yard, as well as how important dietary diversity, supplementation and food fortification is to bring about a change on ground. Thank you so much for watching.